Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, I'm going to show you how to determine the forward and reverse primer sequences when you want to get gene clones, meaning you want to amplify and purify the entire gene. Okay? So this is not useful when all you're doing is just designing optimized primers for just checking to see if a gene is there, if it's been amplified. This is useful when you want the entire gene sequence. And so in the previous video, I showed you actually how to get the gene sequence from GenBank using Uniprot if we know the protein name. And this was actually the entire sequence right here for the Aladdin protein in Cyanidia schizon merili. What we see here is the first three nucleotides, that's going to represent the start codon. The last three are going to represent the stop codon. So this is actually the entire sequence of nucleotides for the entire gene. Okay, And so when we design the forward primer, we're obviously going to include the first nucleotide on the five prime end. Because if we're trying to amplify the entire gene, we need to include every single nucleotide. And so the forward primer has to start at the five prime end. Now, let's suppose we were making a primer that's 20 nucleotides long. When we're designing the forward primer, all we do is we just start with the very first nucleotide, which almost always will be A, because the start codon, at least in DNA nucleotides, is ATG. We'll just count over 20 nucleotides. So you just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And so this sequence right there that I just bolded, that is the exact sequence of the forward primer. So in a sense, when you're designing these primers, the forward primer is actually relatively easy to design. You just get the entire gene sequence, and again, go back to the previous video to review that, but you just take the first nucleotides at the five prime end. If you wanted a, a primer that's 25 nucleotides, then you just add five more onto here. Pretty straightforward. That's your forward primer. The reverse primer is going to start at the three prime end, but we have to do something a little bit different to this. Now, generally speaking, we want the reverse primer to be the same length as the forward primer, just to make things simple. So let's count over 20 nucleotides. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this is 20 nucleotides right here. Now, the reverse primer is not just this sequence, okay? Um, we actually have to take the reverse complement of this sequence. And there's a lot of different programs you can use to find the reverse complement, but I would never try to do it by hand because you're gonna have human error, plus it's gonna take a while. Go to Google, and I'm just gonna type in get reverse complement. Um, this is the way I always find it. And I always use this one through Harvard's website giving a shout out to Harvard, I suppose. And I'm just going to copy and paste that three prime sequence of 20 nucleotides right into this box. And then all I'm going to do is hit reverse complement. And this is my reverse complement sequence. So this sequence, the way it's written, on the left side, this is the five prime end. On the right side, this is the three prime end. So I'm going to go ahead and take that really quickly and just go ahead and put it in here. So there we have it. This right here now is my reverse primer sequence. Now, with the forward primer, you just take it as is from the five prime end of your gene sequence. And it's pretty much, assuming that you have a normal gene, it's always going to start with ATG. The reverse primer, however, is going to be the reverse complement of the three prime end of your gene. So now that you have your forward primer and reverse primer sequences, it doesn't do you any good just to sit there. You need to order the sequences. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to a program online such as IDT, Integrated DNA Technologies. This is what we use. And when we get on this website, we're going to go to DNA Oligos. These are where you order your primer. So I'm going to click on DNA Oligos. And I'm going to click on just whatever I want here. Um, we want single-stranded DNA because primers by definition are single-stranded. So I'm just going to hit order now here. And then pretty much all I'm going to do is I'm going to input my sequences in here. Okay. Now I can increase the number of primers. So I'm just going to be ordering two, let's say, for now. 
And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm just going to copy and paste my sequences in here as is. So for example, my first one would just have this sequence and I could name it up here. Okay. My second one would just be down here. This is my reverse primer. Again, I'm just going to copy and paste that in directly as is. Okay, and it also gives you some information here about the GC content, etc., the melting temperature, and so forth. I'm not concerned about the, the difference in melting temperatures here. That's irrelevant. I just did this as an example. But we can go here and select how much we want. For the lab that I worked in, we typically did 25 nanomole DNA oligo, and then formulation none, and standard desalting. And so then you'll go ahead and name both of these, and you'll order them. When they're delivered, it'll just be a bunch of little particles at the bottom of a tube. You really won't be able to see them. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to add some amount of milliq water, ultra pure water, uh, to basically get it into a primer solution. What I typically did was added one milliliter, so a thousand microliters of milliq or ultra pure water, and then that way you have a sort of a concentrated primer solution and then you can deal with it from there. But in any case, this is how you order your primers and this right here is how you determine the sequences of the primers. And remember, this is useful for when you want clones of an entire gene, not just a small segment of it just to check to see if the gene was amplified or something like that. This is useful when you're trying to amplify the entire gene from the start codon to the stop codon. All right. So hopefully this made sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.